this is day five. At day five, all the prep work is done and it is about ready to tile. This um, will be red guarded first, but the prep work was very, very important. As you may have remembered from the first video, uh, these valves, there were some issues with it. They weren't even. Now they're even. They also were too deep inside the wall, so I had to bump them out. They also weren't plumbed in totally. All, all, th all three of these lines on each one of those came down into the crawl space area and they were empty. Um, in other words, they were cut off. They had no water in them. So one of these, I believe it's the one on the left, that one was already pre-plumbed, although it was cut off, it was pre-plumbed to go up for this rain head, this rain forest head shower, but that pipe was cut off in the crawl space also, so I just had to make the connection to there. This one, again, came up under where the crawl space is and feeds that shower head, and so that had to be plumbed in as well, as well as the uh, hot and the cold on both sides. And the drain too, because there was no drain uh, P trap below here, so I had to tap into the three inch sewer line, which is way over there in the crawl space. Um, that took some time. Once all that got done, then I was able to do all this prep, rebuild the bench with um, the proper three quarter inch ply that's up under here, and then the door rock on top of it. The shower pan got poured, and the door rock, and in this case, perma base, a mixture of both, got put on the walls. And then, of course, all mudded up. Um, anywhere there's a crack got mudded, anywhere there's a seam, anywhere there's a nail or a screw head, um, also got that. So that when I put the red guard on there, that it'll all be waterproof. Um, a couple little things that I get asked about a lot on a lot of my videos when people are trying to do the tile on their shower floor. They ask about how to start setting the tile up against the wall where the board meets the shower pan and in this case the board doesn't meet the shower pan so the type of tile is being used on this one although it doesn't matter which tile it is is this three by six tile and this will actually go up under and up against the shower pan liner you know like this it'll be staggered but either which way it goes up against there and in this case all the way around there's a gap there of about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter. By the time the tile gets put down, it'll be a little less than that. But the idea is that when the larger field tile go on, that it will overlap and set. So there will be a gap. There will be a gap here so that the wall board never touches anything that could be wet. And that gap is, is all the way around. And that's how it's done. As you can see, all the way around that gap exists so that there's no danger of the wallboard ever getting wet from the bottom part because um, I don't red guard the bottom part. Now, that answers that question. There's a lot of other things on here that you might want to know about and I'm not going to go through all that. Um, I have other videos on my channel that you can go to as far as building a curb. I have, I'll post it right here, there's a video about how to build a curb. There is other videos that I have on my channel about pouring well, about setting the pan liner, so the pan liner and the mortar kind of go hand in hand. I will post that video right here as well. There is also another video on how to put in the shower drain, and I will post that video right there as well. So you can go to any of those three videos and, and see those. Um, as far as the prep on the walls go, I believe if I have a video about how to set wallboard, I will post it right there also um, and I have two or three videos on how to waterproof a shower so I'm not going to go through that right now um, I will post a video here right there on how to waterproof a shower and you can go look at that um, which is what I'm getting ready to do right now this will get because it's uh, Dura Rock rather than green board it will get um, probably three coats of, of, of the material the reason is this is very porous material so when you even taking a roller over it, you don't get into all the little nooks and crannies. It takes at least two coats to get to that. In addition, I'm going to do the entire floor also in red guard up to that drain, up to the edge of the drain, so that the whole bottom of the shower pan is also um, waterproof. By the way, when you try and set tile, if you don't have kind of a thin mortar or a 
thin set mix. If you don't if you don't make it thin enough, it doesn't get enough traction to get onto this. This is sand topping mix. That's what this is made out of. And it you can you can do it a couple of different ways. You can wet this down. You can kind of spritz it with some water so you get good adhesion of your thin set when you put it on there. Therefore, the tile will stick well. Or you can do it this way, which is what I've done. You put your mortar, your I'm sorry, your thin set, spread some thin set really good so that the bonding happens between that and the thin set around the drain. So when you put the little cut pieces around the drain, you don't have any issues with trying to get those those pieces to stick to this material. Rather, they're sticking to that material, which is much easier. So that's a little trick also. Then the next step will be doing the shower floor and that will be completely done and grouted before any wall tile goes up. And as I said before, that wall tile will overlap on the entire floor that's already been grouted.